What have the last three, four years taught us? Taught me a lot. Um, taught me that I, and I believe humanity, um, can really suffer from isolation. That it is physically debilitating and will debilitate your health if you are not in a physical proximity to others. Um, really didn't just mess with my mind. You know, I started to physically ail from the lack of like a hug. <laughs> Absolutely. And in that time, I came to realize that we are very malleable when we are in that state of need, right? You think about the basic needs. When you are hungry, you're going to do what you have to do. Same when your basic needs are met. And then the next level is fulfillment, you know, attachment, connection, belonging. When that is extracted and taken away from you, it is much easier to be influenced. It is much easier to be, I'll tell you, the feeling that I had during isolation is that I was being herded like a sheep. That we were being debilitated through being separated. That we were being filled with dread. And that we were created over time with the erosion of that um, sense of ourselves, because sometimes the sense of ourselves needs to be reflected back to us in the eyes of others. And when you don't have that, you start to kind of lose your identity a little bit. You know, people are important mirrors in our lives. And it, it got me really debilitated. I was debilitated. And, and there's two ways that you can go. I retreated inward. Um, and isolated and and did some really kind of harmful things to myself let myself get in positions that were not good for me and kind of knew i was doing it but i, I didn't care i needed a connection i needed something <laughs> i was drowning in my solitude and others kind of to get that same sense of safety they look to an outside force that says, don't worry, do this, and then you'll be safe, do this, and then you'll be safe. All this to say that as Americans, and we're such a young country um, compared to other countries, and we make a lot of mistakes. I, I feel like we're like a teenager. And we rebel like a teenager, but as a people, I do feel like we have a little bit of that rebellious nature in us. And now is the time to feed that part of your inner adolescent. I don't care what you believe, but I do ask you to stand up and look at your beliefs. Oh, I do care what you believe, <laughs> but that, that would not be true. But I don't, I don't insist that you agree with me. But I do insist that you have the conversation about what you do believe and that you choose to believe in something or else you are being herded like a sheep and you will believe what you are told without looking between the lines. And I think now more than ever, it is so important to whatever you hew to, you better hew to it quite honestly and with integrity and stand by it even when it's not easy, especially when it's not easy and when no one is looking. Where are you when no one is looking? How deep do you stand in your beliefs? Or are you so steeped in making sure that you're comfortable that that's where you remain? So that is the challenge I pose for you today, to take a look at where you stand between feeling free, which can feel very uncomfortable because it's the ultimate responsibility, and feeling comfort. Now, I don't think that you have to lay on a bed of nails every day, but I think an edge provides something for you, a good guidepost. And the varying degrees at which you are pushed to your edge is not a bad barometer of where you are. So where are you? That's what's come up for me today.
and I will see you tomorrow.